Hello, welcome to The Revealing. I am once again, your host, Pavarotti. I'm here to bring you information on the Idaho 4 case. As a disclaimer, this channel is for entertainment purposes only. These are my opinions. Not here to slander anyone. Let's get started. Today, I'm going to be reacting to that video I was telling you about yesterday. Miss Nancy Grace. When I watched it, as I mentioned before, it made my blood boil because I could see very clearly what was taking place. Now, I also watched earlier today, I believe it was Jewels of All Trades. She did a video on it as well. Now, Jules puts out good information. She is a lot more, I don't wanna say politically correct, but she's, um, you know, she holds back quite a bit more than, than I plan to. You know, what? whatever's on my mind, I'm going to say it because I'm just not scared to. I mean, what's the worst that could happen to me? They deplatform me. They're not going to whoop me. I promise you that. But what she was discussing, it was the same thing that I noticed. She was discussing the fact that Nancy Grace was really focusing in on the time of this atrocity. And I'm going to play this video for you because you have to see it. Now, I'm not going to play the whole thing. It's like 45 minutes, but I'm going to play probably five minutes of it for you just to, so you can get the gist. And the first thing that I really want to point out is not necessarily the, the times of when the atrocity happened that she's going to discuss, but I want you to pay close attention because she starts it out with, a very forceful, the judge is demanding now that the defense finally give their alibi on April 17th. He set a deadline and he's demanding it. Well, you and I, I hope you've seen it because I've even put it in you know a couple of my videos, but we watched that courtroom Scenario where the judge listened to the defense's arguments on giving the alibi and the prosecution's arguments on giving the alibi, and I gave my opinion on that. And in no way did the judge demand that the defense give their alibi statement. I mean, it was the most half-hearted, half-hearted, you know, have it by this date statement that I've ever heard from any type of judge. Judge John Judge, but she describes it like the judge has just come out against the defense and, oh, I want that alibi statement by this date, and he's being hard on the defense. And then she gets into the time of the atrocity, and I'm really going to hit that hard because that's what has really got my blood boiling, and I'll explain why after you watch this. Dang. So what is your alibi what is your fake alibi? Who said that? What is your alibi? Now, notice of alibi is due. The state is asking, could you be a little more specific than he's just wandering around town? And the defense is now alluding to the fact they have witnesses that place Brian Koberger somewhere completely different than the crime scene on King Road, where four beautiful, young University of Idaho students are slaughtered in their own beds. Where? Where is he at 3 a.m.? I can't wait to hear this. Witnesses? What witnesses? As I've told many a jury, nothing good happens after midnight. So where is Koberger going to tell us he was at 3 a.m. at the time of the murders? And what witnesses? are going to bail him out of four murder one charges. You're seeing right there the murder scene. Some of those are photos I took. 
uh, let's, yeah, let's scroll through because you can see exactly what was going on inside that home from what we believe to be Koberger's perch on a, let me just say incline and a parking area, right? Yeah, right there. Like where you're looking right now, where you are standing, viewer, right there, you can look right in to the home from that parking lot, which was perched a little bit above the home. So you want to tell me that's not where he was at 3 a.m. waiting to make his entrance into this home under the cloak of darkness? Because I say that's exactly where he was. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. First of all, what is a judge looking for? Will they even respond? Or will somehow Koberger's defense team wiggle out of yet another judicial command? Listen to Nicole Parton, Crime Online. Judge John Judge set an April 17th deadline for Kohlberger's legal team to provide documents related to an alibi. Last year, at least two possible alibis were set out by Kohlberger's attorney. The first saying it was Kohlberger's habit to go for long drives alone late at night. Defense attorney Ann Taylor later gave the court brief information saying, quote, evidence corroborating Mr. Kohlberger being at a location other than the King Road address will be disclosed pursuant to discovery and evidentiary rules, as well as statutory requirements, unquote. The location has not been revealed. Liz, keep showing me Koberger. Wait, no, 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 don't show me me. Show me Koberger. Look at him. This guy. I mean, the jury's going to take one look at this and run as if they had seen a monster. I mean, that look in his eyes. You want to be alone in a room with this guy? Liz, can you give me something a little bit closer to his face so I can look at the, Okay, there you go. He looks almost normal right there. Kind of like almost a smile, approaching a smile. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I don't want to be in the same room with him unless I was trying him for four counts of murder. Joining me now, an all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now. First to Maureen Callahan with DailyMail.com, an author of Ask Not the Kennedys and the Women They Destroyed. Oh, you're going to need a volume two for that, Maureen Callahan. But that said, back to Koberger. <laughs> What? Alibi. Alibi, my rear end. I can't wait to hear this. Okay, and the judge is basically ordering them because under the law, and I'm going to get with Tara Malik about that, uh, a high-profile lawyer in that jurisdiction, about, hey, you can't, the defense can't say, oh, yeah, I've got an alibi. No, no, no. Notice of alibi has to be more specific so the state will be prepared to respond. And I mean, and of course, I'm going to go to Della Torre in a moment. What kind of alibi is that? Creepy dude driving round and round and round in circles at 3 a.m.? Uh-uh. They got to come up with something better than that. But to you, Maureen Callahan, tell me what's happening. Koberger is now being forced to hand over, fork over an alibi. That's got to hurt. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it strains credulity that this guy who is on trial for one of the most savage murders of this young century, okay. seemingly. See how Miss Nancy Grace talks about this case? Now, I played a video yesterday where she started it out with, of course, Mr. Koberger is innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. She didn't start this one out that way, though, did she? No, it was the judge that's telling them to give their alibi. And then probably 10 times this lady says, where were you at at 3 a.m., Mr. Koberger? How are you going to produce 300 witnesses that show you were somewhere else than the crime scene at 3 a.m.? Now, I don't have that probable cause affidavit in front of me, but I think we've all read it. And what does it say? It says the atrocity happened between 4 o'clock and 4.25 a.m. Now, folks, Nancy Grace is very aware of what that probable cause affidavit says. 
She's very aware of what law enforcement has said the time of this atrocity happened. Nancy Grace is not like me. I'm sitting here with a camera talking to you. Nancy Grace has producers, editors. She has a team of people that puts her shows together, right? She's the mouthpiece. So if you think between her, the editors, the producers, and everybody else on their team, they don't know what time this atrocity happened, then you're fooling yourself. They know exactly what time the atrocity happened. So now we've got to stop and think, why would she come out right now when she's saying the judge has demanded his alibi, she starts refuting 300 witnesses that would prove he was somewhere else at 3 a.m. when we know that's not the time of the atrocity according to law enforcement, and she knows it as well. Well, let me tell you what she's done, okay? She is working with prosecution there in Idaho. There's no doubt about it. Here's the way these things like this works. They get with her and they say, uh-oh, we've got an issue. They are going to be able to prove that he wasn't at the crime scene between 4 and 4.25 a.m. So we've got to manipulate everything at this point and go back to the original time frame of 3 a.m. But we can't just put that out there because everybody will know that we changed the time frame to refute the defense's alibi. So we've got to start prepping the public. We've got to get this information out there and start prepping the public with a different time frame of when the atrocity happened. The way that we do that is we get with the mainstream media. She is a prime candidate for them to do that with. Now, why would she do that? They've obviously offered her some type of exclusive on the story when the trial happens. That's how those deals go down. They offer her an exclusive in exchange for her pushing the narrative in the direction that they need her to push it in. And somebody like Nancy Grace would absolutely go along with it. She's a former prosecutor. She thinks everybody's guilty, and she doesn't care, you know, what anybody else thinks. She'll push the narrative she wants to push. Well, folks, be prepared, because that's the narrative that they're now going to start pushing. It won't just be Nancy Grace. It'll be all those mainstream media folks that are going to start talking about the time of the atrocity. Because I guarantee you, the defense has come up with a way through their alibi statement that's going to refute the law enforcement time frame of when this atrocity took place. Now, when I saw that, I mentioned my blood began boiling. So that is not a fair way to try a case. This case supposedly has a gag order on it. And the gag order is always supposed to be so that they don't pollute a potential jury pool. Well, what are they doing? They're intentionally polluting the jury pool long before the trial ever takes place. Well, that is not a fair trial. So if they're going through that much effort in polluting a jury pool by manipulating the mainstream media narrative, then that makes me think their case is not very strong against Mr. Koberger. So that has inspired me to start my new series. The new series is going to be the Koberger is Innocent Theory. I don't have to change anything that I have brought up in all of my videos to be able to prove this theory fairly easily. So I'm going to start doing that in my next videos coming up. I wanted to get this one out there because this is, this is you need to know, this is what inspired me to do this. This guy's got to get a fair trial because that is what our founding fathers put in our Constitution. And this is not what they had in mind. But... I'm going to stop right there because it's, this is me kind of just ranting a little bit and being upset. 
But once again, thank you for liking and subscribing to the channel. Please leave your comments, your criticisms. You know I love those. And going forward, we're going to talk about how Koberger could be innocent beyond a reasonable doubt. That being said, Pavarotti's out.